Hi everybody. How are you? Happy Wednesday. Um, thank you everyone for looking out for me last week. I had laryngitis and I couldn't, you can actually hear I'm a little bit funny still and I couldn't come on and do our live and you know, and I was so bummed because I haven't missed a live in a couple of years since I started them and laryngitis just, I had no voice. Um, some people would say it was a good thing. I had no voice, so I couldn't do my live, but I am feeling much better now. Thank you. And um, I'm just leaving the office and then I looked at the time and realized that I actually wasn't going to make it home in time before eight o'clock. So I'm jumping on live now in the car park at work. So the light's a bit rubbish, um, but hey, still coming to you wherever I can. So tonight, <clears throat> Pardon me, my voice, my voice is still a little bit croaky. Tonight we're going to have a quick chat about easements because, you know, I do a lot of vacant land and residential construction. I'm really involved a lot in both the vendor developer side and also the purchaser side. And a lot of people kind of think they know what easements are and then when I'm getting down to the nitty gritty, really understanding how it can impact what you want to build at the property. So the number one thing is easements are just a real non-negotiable. If you're buying a property with easements, that's it, that's there, you can't change them. But here's a couple of little tricks. Easements are very clear, they're very black and white. You're made to know exactly where they are, how many meters they are. Some people think they're clever. Some people think, okay, I have a three meter easement and I say to you, you cannot build within that easement. I'm not just talking about on the ground. I'm talking about you can't actually have, have any overhang either. You can't have, sometimes people say, well, I'll just put a bit of a, a carport structure on the end of a shed and that can be over the easement area if I don't have a concrete floor. You can't do that either. You can't even have overhang from a pergola. Anything that all that's within that easement area, you can't have anything at all. What often happens within an easement area is it actually has council water and sewer mains. <clears throat> pardon me. It actually has council water and sewer mains intersecting in the ground in that area. So the reason that you're not allowed to construct over the top of it is because if council had to get into that area and they had to dig up any pipes, do any work on any water main, sewer, anything like that, they would have to destroy anything that was on top of it, let alone the cost to remove and things like that. So easements, you have to be really careful about them. The good thing is they are so abundantly clear when it is time to sit down and look at a contract, okay? So there's no mixed signals. It is black and white where there is going to be an easement and where there isn't going to be an easement. So you know from the outset that you can plan any construction that you're going to do to take into account any easements at all. And councils usually take an absolutely non-negotiable approach on easements. They usually now won't let you even consider building anything. There was a time you know, when we've got some properties that are 100 years old that could have small things built over easements depending on sewerage and things like that, but they just won't have a bar of it now. So you're better off making sure that if you can't build what you want to build. Oh, oh my gosh, that's so hilarious. That's live video for you. You just fell off my dash. So <laughs> If you can't build what you want to build, take into account the easement, then you need to change your block of land. Another thing is if you're building, sorry, if you are buying an existing property and when you sit down with your conveyancer and you look through the contract and you can see where there is easements already at the property and you know full well that there has been structures built on the easement area, you're not allowed to have any structures over an easement area without council approval. And a common thing that I see is often you can have a small garden shed at a house without approval. That's what's called exempt development. And you don't need to have council approval to have certain size sheds. However, regardless of the size of the shed, if it's actually on an easement, 
you still have to have approval even if it's only like a two by two shed and it doesn't need approval even if it doesn't even have a concrete bottom if you're actually building or sorry if you're buying something that actually has a small shed on the top of an easement you still have to have approval so it's really important that you pay attention to that when you're looking at buying so as I said the good thing I'm about to drop you again the good thing with easements is that they are very very clear on a plan so clear you know the lines are marked the exact measurements are there you can step them out you know exactly where they are and just understanding that they really are a non-negotiable people are not permitted to build on them if you're buying an older property and you find that someone has built a small shed on there even if that shed normally wouldn't need approval because it's built on an easement it actually does need approval okay so it's something that's a very important process it's easy to find the answers to um, it's kind of 101 conveyancing so your conveyancer your solicitor will be able to help you with it at, you know straight away but it's more about really understanding that it's just a non-negotiable it's not a oh i can kind of do that or council won't know or the neighbors won't mind if i did that it really is a non-negotiable even if you get away with constructing it at the start when you come time to sell a property you'll run into a lot of trouble then so just taking a little bit of care to plan things out properly to avoid any issues in the future. So Wednesday night, that is it for me. I'm sorry I dropped the phone earlier. Uh, thank you for joining me on my drive home from work. Um, it was amazing to see you all. This weekend I'm in Sydney. I'm speaking at the Australian Institute of Conveyances on Saturday. So I'm going to take you along with me. You know, I cannot wait. I've got some real golden nuggets of information that I will be talking about. Um, and um, some pretty big announcements, but uh, I'll bring some of that to you next week. But tonight's topic is all about those little dotted lines that are on your plan. They matter. They're easements. There's pipes underground. Council will not be lenient with you whatsoever if you build something over the top of them. So... They are really easy to recognize on a plan. The measurements are there and just understanding that they are a real non-negotiable. And you know what? You can actually get your conveyancer or your solicitor to point you out with them well before you make offers on any land anyway. So it's not going to be a little hidden secret. You can find out that information before you've even made an offer on the property. Okay? Simple, golden nuggets. I'm losing my son. It's time to go home. See everybody, I'll chat soon.